Hey class, this is Miss Jean, and now we will move into Unit 2 of our course, which is Unpacking the Self. Today we will talk about the physical and sexual self. As you can see, I am using an automated voice because I don't have a voice today. After all, yesterday I ate a lot of pochi candy and chocomucho chocolate. So anyway, welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 1, Your Physical and Sexual Self. Human sex chromosomes are thought to determine a person's gender and secondary sexual traits. Our genetic makeup has shaped us since childhood. It has an impact on how people behave. Others do not accept their natural sexual features and want to alter them through drugs and surgery. However, sexual orientation and gender preferences are not part of our discussion. I will be talking about that some other time in a separate video. We will be touching only the biological aspect of ourselves and how this influences how we interact with others and the world. Apart from our DNA, our community or the outside world influences our development. Through examining the formation of our sex organs, this lesson attempts to help you understand yourself better. Before anything else, I retrieved a video about sex differentiation and male and female reproductive organs. I attached the video links in the description box. Kindly check them out. What is an indifferent stage? The indifferent stage occurs during the early stage of development, where the reproductive structures of males and females are alike. Certain abnormalities occur in this stage when there are interferences with the normal pattern of sex hormone production. Pseudohermaphroditism is when individuals have accessory reproductive structures that do not match their gonads. Meanwhile, hermaphroditism is when individuals produce both ovarian and testicular tissues. Abnormal separation of chromosomes during meiosis can lead to congenital disabilities of the reproductive system. For example, males who possess extra female chromosomes have normal male genitalia. Still, their testes undergo atrophy, or in layman's terms, their testes will shrink, which causes them to be sterile. Other abnormalities also occur when a person only has one sex chromosome. Normally, people get chromosomes which are the X chromosome and the Y chromosome for males and two X chromosomes for females. A female with X and O chromosomes appears normal, but they lack ovaries. On the other hand, males with Y and O chromosomes cannot even survive. The X chromosome is necessary to survive. Each X chromosome contains 800 to 900 genes, approximately 5% of all DNA in human cells. Without an X chromosome, many necessary proteins would not be produced. Abnormalities cause other less serious conditions in chromosome separation, such as phimosis. Phimosis is the narrowing of the foreskin of the male reproductive structure and misplaced urethral openings. Puberty is the period of life old when the reproductive organs grow to adult size. Changes in puberty are similar in sequence, but to what age they occur differs per individual. In this section, we will be talking about reproductive system diseases. Infections are the most common problems associated with the reproductive system among adults. Vaginal infections are one of the most common infections among women. Escherichia coli or sexually transmitted microorganisms cause them. In males, the most common inflammatory conditions are prostatitis, epididymitis, and urethritis, which follow sexual contact from STD microorganisms. Meanwhile, tumors of the breast or cervix are the most common reproductive cancers in adult females, and prostate cancer is widespread among males. Let us now move on to the sexual self. Firstly, let us talk about the erogenous zones. Erogenous zones refer to parts of the body that are primarily and, when touched, increases sexual arousal. Some common erogenous zones are the mouth, breasts, genitals, and anus. But take note that erogenous zones may vary from one person to the other. Some people are aroused in the most unlikely of places too. What is human sexual behavior? Human sexual behavior can be solitary, between two people or in a group. According to Gebhardt in his 2017 study, sexual behavior is defined as any activity that induces sexual arousal. Sexual responses are programmed in our biology to ensure reproduction and our sexual expressions become complicated. 
because of the differing values, perceptions, and attitudes towards sex. Religion and culture plays a huge part in influencing how one regards sexual acts. The two types of sexual behavior according to Gebhard are solitary sexual behavior and sociosexual behavior. Solitary behavior self-gratification or self-stimulation that leads to sexual arousal. This is common and considered normal among males. There are more males who perform solitary sexual behavior than females, and these are prevalent among single and unmarried individuals. Although, solitary sexual behavior still happens between people who undergo sociosexual behavior. The second type is sociosexual behavior. Heterosexual activity, that is sexual activity between two opposite sexed individuals are the most common sexual activity. Coitus is viewed differently per society. Some societies view premarital coitus as sinful while some societies consider it as part of the relationship. Seeing that the Philippines is quite mixed with its values and norms, what do you think are the values of the Philippines towards sex? Comment down below. Here is another video about the physiology of human sexual response. You can click the link below for more information. Next and more importantly, let us talk about diseases that spread through sexual contact. I wanted to post pictures, but some of you might be eating while watching this, so sorry class if there are no pictures here. Number 1. We have Chlamydia. Chlamydia is caused by a certain type of bacteria. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention notes that it is the most commonly reported STD among Americans. Many people with chlamydia have no noticeable symptoms. When symptoms do develop, they often include pain or discomfort during sex or urination, green or yellow discharge from the penis or vagina and pain in the lower abdomen. Next we have HPV or the human papillomavirus. Human papillomavirus is a virus that can be passed from one person to another through intimate skin-to-skin -skin or sexual contact. There are many different strains of the virus. Some are more dangerous than others. The most common symptom of HPV is warts on the genitals, mouth, or throat. Some strains of HPV infection can lead to cancer, including oral cancer, cervical cancer, vulvar cancer, penile cancer, rectal cancer. Third, we have syphilis. Syphilis is another bacterial infection. It often goes unnoticed in its early stages. The first symptom to appear is a small round sore, known as a chancre. It can develop on your genitals, anus, or mouth. It's painless, but very infectious. Later symptoms of syphilis are displayed on screen. Fourth, we have HIV. HIV can damage the immune system and raise the risk of contracting other viruses or bacteria and certain cancers. If left untreated, it can lead to stage 3 HIV, known as AIDS. But with today's treatment, many people living with HIV don't ever develop AIDS. Gonorrhea is another common bacterial STD. It's also known as the CLAP. Many people with gonorrhea develop no symptoms. But when present, symptoms may include the following. Crabs is another name for pubic lice. They're tiny insects that can take up residence on your pubic hair. Like head lice and body lice, they feed on human blood. Common symptoms of pubic lice include itching around the genitals or anus, small pink or red bumps around the genitals or anus, low-grade fever, lack of energy and irritability. Trichomoniasis is also known as a trick. It's caused by a tiny protozoan organism that can be passed from one person to another through genital contact. According to the CDC, less than one-third of people with trick develop symptoms. When symptoms do develop, they may include discharge, burning or itching, pain or discomfort during urination or sex and frequent urination. There are many more sexually transmitted diseases, but we will end with this last one which is herpes. Herpes is the shortened name for the herpes simplex virus. There are two main strains of the virus, HSV-1 and HSV-2. Both can be transmitted sexually. It's a very common STD. The CDC estimates more than one out of six trusted source people ages 14 to 49 have herpes in the United States. HSV-1 primarily causes oral herpes, which is responsible for cold sores. However, HSV-1 can also be passed from one person's mouth to another person's genitals during oral sex. 
When this happens, HSV-1 can cause genital herpes. HSV-2 primarily causes genital herpes. And that's the end of our list of sexually transmitted diseases. The next few slides contain videos about contraception. If you are interested, I linked the videos in the description box below. In conclusion, there are many more factors that are associated with the physical and sexual self. We have only brushed through the surface. A lot of the variables come into place and interact with our social, biological, and psychological nature. However, no matter what your values are towards sex, always be careful and practice safe sex. That's all for our video class. Thank you for listening, and as always have fun learning.